This is 2K Sports. I'm Ernie Johnson. Welcome to the NBA. We're joined by the legends Shaquille O'Neal and Kenny the Jet Smith. The fans are filling the seats in San Antonio, the site of our broadcast, and where the Spurs will be going up against the Dallas Mavericks. For Dallas, they're looking to come out strong and make their mark early. They have to look at this game as a great opportunity to do just that. Guys, let's dig into some of the players who might be, you know, less known to the viewers and talk about some of the more underrated players in the league. Who would be your picks? Underrated guys, Kenny? Um, I like Paul Millsap. I think he's underrated. I think uh, his value to the team. There's a bunch of guys on that Atlanta team that's underrated, you know, Teague and Millsap. Uh, Markeith Morris down up in Phoenix, man. A lot of people – you know, because the Suns aren't in the playoffs, they don't get the opportunity to see how good a player he is. And um, Shaq, what do you think? Well, I'm going to go with uh, my underrated starting five, Ernie. At the point, I'm going to go with Isaiah Thomas. Ooh. I At like the that. two, I got Goran Dragic. Wow. At three, Kawhi Leonard. Wow. Four, Draymond Green. Okay. And five, my guy. DeMarcus, big cuz, How's going to be underrated? He made the all-star team. And how can Kawhi Leonard be By underrated default. when he was a finals MVP? MVP By underrated. default, he is underrated because we don't talk about him a lot. Well, I Who do. doesn't? We I, don't. Okay. I, I, we do. I, I, well, they're not, they're, they're not commercial guys, meaning they don't have TV commercials. I so agree they're, underrated. they're underrated. Nobody knows about Those them. guys could sell products, man. I stand corrected yeah. again. Yeah, well, get used to it. We'll see you next time. So put them on the cover of 2K. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to G2 Gaming with the Gandy Man here. It's that time of the year again, ladies and gentlemen. The NBA games are coming out. NBA Live 16 and NBA 2K16. With that, there will be many people who will be faced with the dilemma of which one to get. Or if they should get any of them since most games are the same year to year. The latter of which is what I debate every year with Madden. Anyways, ladies and gentlemen, I will be talking about each of the games since I have spent time playing them both. Bear in mind, however, I have only spent time playing the NBA Live 16 demo while I have had ample time to play the full version of NBA 2K16. Therefore, I will only be addressing the first impressions of these two games and leave most of the features out of the debate like my career, season franchise mode, and my GM. I will, however, address the gameplay of the actual games and the online mode, the latter in brief detail. First off, I have been a huge fan of the NBA Live series since its days back on the N64, and honestly for the longest time I felt that it was way better than the NBA 2K series. That feeling and opinion stopped at about NBA 2K7, where I felt that the both games were about equal and then again at NBA 2K10, where honestly I felt 2K was the better basketball game. That being said, NBA Live 10 was the last good live game. NBA Live 09 being the last best basketball game out of the two of them. In the time since, NBA Elite 11 was canceled, with the following two being canceled as well. Enter the next-gen consoles in 2014, and the return of NBA Live had arrived with NBA Live 14. NBA 2K had continued to spew out games with NBA 2K 11 through 14, with average basketball gameplay as to be expected. NBA 2K14 was the better basketball game of the year with the intro to the My Career mode that has evolved into what many fans love today. NBA Live 14, on the other hand, underperformed despite high expectations on its return. I mean, come on. They had been out of the game for four years and therefore had four years to refine modes and, and graphics and gameplay altogether. Learn from your competition, learn from your fans, and get back into the ring with a great game. However, as we all painfully learned, that was not the case. NBA Live 14 was barely playable. IGN, in fact, gave it a horrible review, saying that the net, the net, of the out of the entire game was the best thing about it. The freaking net. And it was pretty much the sad truth. Still, I decided to give it a shot. Played it, and within the first month, returned it. The player models were okay, but they were stiff while moving around the court. And the gameplay was yuck. NBA 2K14 was by far the best basketball game for that year, and the same for the following year after that. NBA Live 15 was improved quite a bit. Player models were better, gameplay was improved, but still the players looked stiff and it did not feel like a legit basketball game apart from the looks. NBA 2K15 improved almost every aspect of 2K14 with a better my career, which was pretty much awesome, and they improved their game on a new generation of consoles. Now another year has passed and NBA Live 16 and NBA 2K16 are here. If you have seen my recent 
first impression video of NBA Live 16, you know a little bit about what I'll be addressing and where I stand on this game. The big questions are, if I only have 60 bucks to spend on a basketball game, which should I, which should I get? Is NBA Live better than last year? Why should I get one game over the other? I will be giving my answers to all of them, but first there are a few things to note. Again, I have only played the demo of NBA Live 16, so I will have to restrict my opinions from the other modes of NBA 2K16. I will be answering those questions based on the following, the graphics and gameplay. It's Williams with the drive. Offensive struggles continue, missing again. Really just struggling here in the first few minutes. Five attempts with only one fall. First thing to talk about is the graphics. Both games look really, really good. But at a glance, NBA Live looks better than 2K this year. If you are walking by a screen with someone playing the games, both may look like real games, but it would be easier to tell that 2K's game is a game. Whereas if you were walking by NBA Live 16, you might actually mistake it for the real deal. It may in large part be due to the ESPN graphics that, that Live utilizes as opposed to the TNT-like graphics that 2K uses. But the court looks better and bigger on NBA Live than it does on 2K. I've been saying that for years though. The scale of the court and arenas are significantly more realistic on NBA Live games than they are on 2K. The overall arena sounds feel and are more realistic on live than they are on 2K as well. However, 2K does have a better attention to detail. In fact, while playing the game, I've noticed everything in the arena, for the most part. You can see the wood panels in the court, something you aren't able to see in NBA Live games or previous 2K games. This gives the court a sense of life to it. Looks like it's something that can be built and something that is actually real. However, that being said, I still like the actual court look on NBA Live better. It feels bigger and is less crammed together like a real basketball court. The scale of each game is drastically different because of this. NBA Live 16, the court looks bigger in comparison and relative to the players on the court, like the actual broadcast in real life. NBA 2K16 has a squished look to the court, especially when on the broadcast camera or the default camera, compared to that of NBA Live 16. This has been something that I have felt a big difference in since 2K has come into the scene, but even more so in these next-gen, current-gen games. Still, they are both good but I prefer the look in live better than that of 2K. Also, just to point out, each game does have its share of clipping. Sometimes people will go through one another, or the ball will go through a player. In 2K16, legs will awkwardly fold in a weird way. However, in both games, the clipping happens fairly, fairly rarely. Inside. Well time pass, and he goes straight to the bucket for the layup. The Quicks got his second bucket tonight. And against the Clippers, the Spurs didn't have home court advantage. I mean, ended up playing a big part in that series. They ended up losing in Game 7. Now on to the gameplay. Gameplay is where the cream really rises to the top. Gameplay for the purpose of this video will include controls for the game and the overall playing of the game. It is important to point out that just because you played 2K15, you will not instantly be comfortable in 2K16. In most fields, the change between the two games are easy but the controls are drastically different. Button layouts are different. The L2 button is no longer an alternative button like it has been in the previous years. Instead, it is the post-up button, which is very similar to the days of old when the post-up button was in or around that same place. When I first began to play 2K16 and realized that the triangle button was a pass button instead of my post-up button, my first instinct was to press the L2 button. Like I just briefly said, the triangle button is now a pass button for lobbing or alley-ooping if you double tap it, which is honestly better than 2K15. Likewise, the circle button is a bounce pass or a flashy pass if you double tap that. The X button is still a standard pass, squares still shoot, and the pro stick still works in the same way as it has in previous years, with the exception of those pass buttons being put where they are and the post-up button changing. The controls of the game are the same. When talking about NBA Live 16, controls are very similar, if not identical to that of NBA Live 14, and therefore 15. Again, for the most part. The right analog stick in NBA Live 16 is just for dribble moves, which differs than the right analog stick or pro stick in NBA 2K16. 
To be honest though, that layout is what I prefer out of the two games to a point. I would prefer the right analog stick to work the same way in NBA 2K16 as it does in NBA Live 16. I do not like the fact that if I accidentally flick the pro stick back or forward, it will either take me into a shot or pump fake when I am trying to do a dri dribble move. Granted, NBA 2K16 is a little bit more forgiving for that point. You can do various size up and dribble moves without shooting if you do it right. However, one thing that I do like about the pro stick is that it allows you to do more a more variety of things. In 2K16, the pro stick, even though it is very similar to 2K15, has changed just a little bit. Driving and pushing the stick either to the left or right will give you a left or right handed layup or dunk respectively. Pushing the pro stick forward on a drive lets you do a two-handed dunk, or pulling it backwards allows you to do a signature flashy dunk. Pulling it down and either to the side or to the left or right will do a pro hop or a euro step layup or dunk. All of which are not possible in NBA Live 16 unless you do some extra button pushing. The directional buttons in, the, in both games are similar. Use them to call defensive or offensive plays and substitutions. In 2K, in 2K16, you can also view the stats of the player you are currently controlling and also adjust the game strategy regarding defensive and offensive approaches. I do not use the directional buttons for anything but subs and adjusting strategy, however. One thing I will address when it comes to substitutions in 2K16 is that it has been changed compared to that of 2K14 and 2K15, and the jury is still out on the effectiveness of that change. And here's why. Instead of selecting the new player you are subbing in by pressing the directional buttons left or right, you have to do the appropriate movement on the right analog stick as indicated by the symbol next to their name. Honestly, I'm not a big fan of that. It is taking way too long for me to get the subs I want. However, over time, I assume that it could prove to be the faster way of substitutions. Like I said, the jury is still out. Another thing to note is that over my time playing NBA Live 16, the controls are not as responsive as 2Ks. The rebounding sucks in NBA Live because pressing the triangle button, rebounding in both 2K and in Live, the delay is significant and can cause you to lose the rebound. Instead, you have to press the rebound button either just before the ball hits the rim or just as the ball is falling halfway down in order to make the rebound. That just will not do for me in a basketball game, and probably a large portion of the audience playing. Rebounding is a big part of a basketball game, and missing a rebound because of a delay is simply unacceptable. Now the gameplay is also the biggest and most apparent difference of these two games, in my opinion. The title of this review is the looks versus the feels. The reason lies between the difference in the graphics and presentation of the two games and the gameplay difference between the two games. Honestly, NBA Live 16 looks like a basketball game, and to be fair, so does NBA 2K16. They both look great, but like I said, NBA Live 16 looks more like a broadcast and therefore easier to get confused with the real deal than NBA 2K16. However, NBA 2K16 feels like the real deal. How? First, in the NBA Live 16, characters seem to move better than previous installments, but they are still not as smooth or natural. But in NBA 2K16, movement is smooth, quick, fast, and looks natural. On top of that, I feel like they have been working hard towards this in their past games, but finally got this just right. Big players such as Dwight Howard, LeBron James, Amari Stoudemire, and etc., and other players with big physique feel that way. They can bump, they feel like they can bump and grind in the paint and knock almost any smaller player around. Likewise, the smaller players, Tony Parker, Chris Paul, John Wall, Nate Robinson, and people like that feel like they can run circles around bigger guys just because they are so much faster than them and more elusive. But I think this is another cool aspect of the game right here. We've never done, and every time we did it, it's not us. Yeah, where they where they actually player spotlight uh, an interview and whatnot. I think that's one of the coolest things. Um, that actually makes it feel like an actual broadcast as compared to um, just a game. I think that is a very cool addition that they did to the game. Um, also, to NBA 2K's credit, they added in a, a post, a halftime show and a post show, as well as that pregame show that they did. Uh, last year as well um, but yeah back on track 
The lengthier players such as Kawhi Leonard, Tim Duncan, Tony Allen, Lou Aldang, etc. feel like they are almost impossible to get around because of their length and defensive abilities. Tanks like LeBron James feel and look even more like they can run over smaller and light, def light defenders. This is something NBA Live has yet to accomplish in any of their games. NBA 2K16 has each player playing like they would. Tall, slower players shouldn't be playing small ball type game like the Warriors do, just because they are in the game. Physically, in real life, they don't play that way. And 2K16 got that right. This goes into the term cheese that most people have thrown around when reviewing or talking about the game pre-release. In 2K15, a my career player at the beginning of his career can run circles and outperform any big name players like LeBron and KD if the player or if the gamer controlling the player knows what they're doing. In 2K16, not anymore. If a weaker or lower skilled player tried to get past LeBron, you would run a high risk of picking up your dribble or getting stripped like by LeBron instead of going right by him. Likewise, if you are LeBron, he could get past smaller, weaker defenders, but it would be extremely hard and more difficult for him to get around people like Tony Allen or Kawhi Leonard because of their great ability to defend the ball and play the way, and they play that way even when controlled by AI. The game also makes scoring a lot more difficult as well. If you're covered by the defense, you will more than likely get a red meter shot for a bad shot or bad timing or yellow and almost always miss the shot. Even if you get a yellow shot or yellow meter shot, the percentage of making that shot will fall drastically if you're covered very well. The nice part is this happens on both sides of the ball. So if you're missing those shots, so will the CPU if you guard them well enough. This feature is similar to the contending feature that NBA Live 16 has as well, where it will notify you if your shot was contested, clean or open, etc. Here's the bottom line. NBA 2K16 feels real. NBA Live 16 looks real. Both games do a really good job increasing pressure during the big games and close games. You feel it from the crowd. If you are on the losing end and at home, the crowd will feel apprehensive and it waits to erupt in excitement if you hit a big shot to go up or they are definitely loud if you are up at the end of a close game or towards the end of a big game. The crowd has an obvious feel between big games and regular games. This is based on the finals game NBA Live 16 has you play at the beginning of the demo and other exhibition games you can play within the game's demo and the difference between the playoff games and 2K and regular exhibition games. So what do you prefer? A game that looks like a real game on your television or a game that feels like a real game? Both games look great, like I said before. NBA Live 16 uses ESPN graphics with a sports center look to the halftime and post game reports. 2K16 uses more TNT like graphics with actual characters, Shaq, Ernie Johnson, and Kenny the Jet Smith as hosts. The halftime show is a look at the action of the first half, while the post game is more like, here's the player of the game, thanks for watching, good night. The post game show in NBA 2K16 is fairly empty because of that. NBA Live 16 recaps the best plays of the half at halftime and of the game at the end. It gives you the player of the game and each team's offensive production in a sports center type setting. The difference between these two games are simple but quite significant. I like a game that looks good, but plays good, therefore 2K is the obvious choice here. But I feel like the improvements to NBA Live 16 this year warrant getting the game at least later on when the price drops. I feel like both games are worth getting and playing for at least a little while. 2K will probably be the one worth playing more than Live, however. So to answer the questions mentioned at the beginning of the video, as answered by me, the Ganny Man, are as follows. If you only have 60 bucks to spend on one game, get NBA 2K16. But I would say get NBA Live 16 at least eventually if your budget can handle it. Is NBA Live better this year than it was last year? I honestly have not played NBA Live 15, but I have seen good chunk of video gameplay from it. And from what I can tell, yes. It is a drastic improvement from NBA Live 14. For the most part, everything looks like it was touched up and improved. Players move around more smoothly than they did on NBA 15 and definitely way more smoothly than they did on NBA Live 14. Why should I get one game over the other? See the entire article above. Just kidding. You should get NBA Live 
if you are interested in getting a better looking game overall. It looks more realistic compared to NBA 2K16. However, get NBA 2K16 if you want a more realistic experience. Makes sense? Also, just an ending point, NBA Live, I feel, has a slightly better online experience so far. 2K servers are historically patchy when it comes to online play, at least for the first while while the game is out, though I have not had any problems as of yet. EA Sports are pretty decent when it comes to their sporting servers, and I feel like 5v5 competitive is better competitive mode is better, and on a, again, only slightly, in live than it is in 2K. Again, I'll probably eventually have both games, but once the pricing for Live 16 drops or there is a used copy at GameStop. Like with all games of similar styles, you're going to have people who like Live better than 2K, whether it's by preference, habit, or experiences with the other companies, or whatever the case may be. And likewise, you're going to have other people who like 2K better than Live. However, I've done my best to present an unbiased opinion on the two and maybe you can make a wise choice for yourself. Remember, all the pressure's on you. Alrighty everyone, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I hope this video helps you out. Don't forget to leave me feedback on the video whether you agreed or disagreed with anything I said. Perhaps even tell me what other games you want me to compare for you. Like and comment and subscribe to the channel as well if you feel so inclined to do so. That would be awesome. Hope you guys enjoyed. Adios and peace until next time. Captain's checked in for Daniel Green. Dallas also making some changes. Villanueva comes in for Jeremy Evans. And Berea subbed in for Harris.